what happens if we want to differentiate a function that is more, there's more to it. We're dealing with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. What do we do? Here's an example of two functions added together. x squared plus c plus ax to the fourth plus b. We differentiate them one after another. So the x squared plus c, that's 2x, and ax to the fourth plus b, that's 4ax cubed. And the b and the c, they have no effect on anything. They're not part of the derivative. Let's look at this from first principles. Let's suppose we have three functions, y, u, and v. Uh, they're functions of x, okay, and y equals u plus v. We nudge up u by an amount du and v by an amount dv, and the result is some change to y by an amount dy. As before, subtract the original function, the y from the left and the u plus v from the right, we end up with dy equals du plus dv. Divide through by dx, and there you have what we were looking for. dy by dx equals du by dx plus dv by dx. We added functions u and v to get y, so to get the derivative of y with respect to x, we add the derivatives of u and v. In our initial example, u was x squared plus c, and v was ax to the fourth plus b. If there's three functions, u, v, and w, it's the same thing. It's one after the other. And subtraction really isn't different. If we have y equals u minus v, we're going to end up with dy by dx equals du by dx minus dv by dx, because we can think of that as y equals u plus negative 1 times v. And then the negative 1 is a constant that we keep in that derivative of v. What if we're dealing with products of functions? So instead of adding that x squared plus c to ax to the fourth plus b, we are multiplying those two functions. Well, I mean, we could just multiply them all out, and then we're back to where we have a succession of smaller functions, which we add together, and we differentiate that. When we do that, it looks like this. Now let's take that derivative and put it off to the side for future reference. And now we're going to try a different way from first principles y, u, and v are all functions of x, but y is the product of u and v. So we adjust x slightly by an amount dx, v by an amount dv, and y by an amount dy. And now we multiply on the right-hand side with all of those differentials. And here's what we end up with. The two original functions multiplied together, u times v, and then a product, u dv, another product, v du, and then the product of two differentials, du times dv. And a differential times a differential is the same as previously when we had dx squared. It's itsy bitsy, teensy weensy, second order of smallness, so we were just, we just toss it out. And now, as before, remove the original function, y from the left, u times v from the right, and we end up with dy equals this product with the differentials in it. Divide through by dx, and now there we have it. dy by dx equals u times dv by dx, and plus v times du by dx. Here's what we're doing. We have a product of two functions. We put our finger on the u and differentiate the v. So now we have u times dv by dx. Then we put our finger on the v and differentiate the u. 
And so we V stays the same, and we have du by dx, and then we sum them all together. We're treating one function as constant while we differentiate the other. Let's go back to our paradigm pair of functions, the product. x squared plus c, that's going to be our u. ax to the fourth, that's going to be our v. So dy by dx is u times dv by dx plus v times du by dx. Keep the x squared plus c constant, differentiate the v. Keep the ax to the fourth plus b constant and differentiate the u. And this we multiply through, clean up a little bit, and we have a, yes, it's a little bit more convoluted, but this is our final solution. But it's, and it's the same as what we did before. Now, you might be looking at this and saying, what's the difference? Why do one over the other? Well, you'll find that the second method, the product rule as it's called, is handier when we're dealing with functions with more pieces in them. Finally, we're going to deal with quotients. So let's look at this quotient of y equals b times x to the fifth plus c divided by x squared plus a. Now, where is the multiplication? We, we, there was a first method we could multiply, but what are we going to do to divide all these? So instead, we're going to go straight to first principles. y equals u divided by v, where y, u, and v are all functions of x. And as we're used to, we adjust u by a small amount du, v by a small amount dv, and y by a small amount dy. Have a look at uh, page 39 in the textbook to see how he performs algebraic division. You see what he's doing there? Yeah, me neither. So here's how, here's how I'm going to do it. We take the u plus du divided by the v plus dv, and we're going to split that up into two rational expressions. In each case, we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same thing, which will be the conjugate of the denominator v minus dv. What does that give us? It gives us v squared minus dv all squared in the denominator. But that dv all squared is something that we can toss out. It's two orders of tininess, itsy bitsy teensy weensy. Out it goes. Multiply through and we end up with this expression. And what do we have way over there on the right? dv times du, itsy bitsy teensy weensy, out it goes. Now we have these three terms all over v squared. Let's separate the uv over v squared, cancel out the v's, and remember, all of this equals y plus dy. Now we're going to remove the original expression, y on the left, u over v on the right, and we end up with an expression for dy. Let's divide dy by dx on the left, and the numerator will divide by dx on the right. And we finally end up with dy by dx. And yes, that is a handful. In the denominator, we have got the square of the function that was in the original denominator. And in the numerator, we have something that looks kind of product rule-ish. But you have to remember which one gets the negative sign. Personally, after almost 40 years of this, I still haven't got a clue. So I have other tricks that I use to remember this. So there's our quotient rule. Let's now apply it to the example uh, where we have b x to the fifth plus c on top and x squared plus a on the bottom. And at this point, it's tedious more than anything. Do give this video a thumbs up to encourage the YouTube algorithm to share the joy with other like-minded individuals. And uh, here is some more joy for you to enjoy. And Bob's your uncle. Cheers.